Hi y'all. Wanted to do a quick video today on um, some of the things that used to be, I'm 66 years old, so back when I grew up in the 70s and 80s and the 90s, there were many books written on the colon. Here we have one here, Colon Health by Dr. Norman Walker. We have Healing Within. This one was by uh, Dr. Stanley Weinberger. And the one that I probably spent the most time in, I would think, when I was first trying to get well, was something, a book called Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management by Dr. Bernard Jensen, who actually lived down over here in Escondido for many years. And he also uh, taught people how to do iridology, the study of the eyes. Anyway, I always quote this book, the title of the book, with clients because that's not a mistake. Tissue cleansing through bowel management. So no, you could lose a lot of weight and you could still be pretty sick in your tissues. You could be full of toxic load. So one of the things that I like to talk about when I'm here on my YouTube channel, especially about colonics and the bowel, is to show people right here, that all of your veins attach to the colon wall, including back here, this pink thing is a, uh, I'm going the wrong way, is an artery. Your arteries and your veins attach to the colon. Your vagal nerve, your vagus nerve attaches to the colon. Your lymphs line the inside of the colon. So why do you think back in the 70s, in 80s and even before your grand my grandma showed us how to do a water enema and why is it so important look at this again tissue cleansing through bowel management and i just showed you how all your veins and your arteries attach to your colon now most of the women i have worked with for 20 years and we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people i've given about 20,000 colonics to people Women are not thinking about the fact anatomically that their female parts is, are laying over their bowel, you know, anatomically. So you have a problem where if you have a lot of stool stuck in your colon, that's going to affect everything. And I just showed you all the blood vessels attaching to it. So if it's full of poo and it's full of toxins, that goes directly into the blood from your veins and your arteries attached to the colon. These books and many of the books that instructed me when I had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, lupus, MS, and then eventually breast cancer, uh, really, I kept seeing, and I really felt like it was a God thing because every book I was studying about health back then, and we didn't have the internet yet, guys, uh, I kept seeing the colon. I kept seeing where these people were constipated or they had diarrhea or their bowels were here and there, or they were always bloated, they were always gassy. And I thought, there has to be an absolute equation between being sick, having headaches, being awful, and your bowels. And back in those old days, uh, there's books, I have this book here, I think this is from the 40s, the Colon Health Handbook. And so they would, what they would do is realize it had to do with your diet. So they'd be like, you know, this is all the diets. You gotta eat a mucus-free diet, or you gotta not eat meat, or whatever it was, you know. And, and, and most of the religious, uh, things of the world. I mean, in, in countries where before you ever had airplanes, people weren't really going to them. Like you would go to India, you go to some of these places. And that was part of, you know, you, you got your body clean. This was all part of the religious sort of purification rites that they would do in those places. So I think it's been understood for many, many years. And I've noticed since about 2002 and three, right, the early 2000s, that even with functional medicine, they have dropped the idea of the bowel affecting your tissues. Because again, your blood vessels are, if you've got a lot of toxins in your bowel and you don't go regularly, that's all going directly out of your, in, in your body, out into the tissues. So your bowels can be sitting there with hardened plaque. What is plaque? Well, I will show you some plaque. So whenever I show pictures like this of um, poop that have come out of people, people will accuse me. Well, first of all, they don't want to look at it and I don't blame you. It's kind of awful. 
but it's sticky and it's hard. It gets black and dark because it's been in there a long time. So if people say, well, what is the shape of it? That's the shape of someone's colon. That's, it comes out in the shape that it was in, in the colon. So you can imagine that to get into these shapes, this one looks like a bike, a bike chain, that it has to be sitting in the colon a fair amount of time to do that, right? So most people think if they have a bowel movement once in the morning that they're fine. And most women, especially women, um, don't go very often. When I do speak with a woman who tells me she goes all the, the words are usually all the time, then we have to look at this as the coin and both sides of the coin. So the one side of the coin is complete constipation or, or going once a week or every three days. The other side is this constant going where there's a lot of loose stool coming out and, and you're going four, five, six, seven, eight times a day. You never feel like you stop. And so you think there's no way I could have, I could have poop up there because I, I go all the time. So both of these ways, hypermotility and constipation are both not a healthy colon. The healthiest colon is a muscle. Imagine you, your, your colon is basically a, a muscle organ that pushes uh, matter forward. So it's almost five feet long. It likes to push, it, it, peristalsis is the musculature feeling that tells you that you have a bowel coming, a bowel movement. Now for a lot of people who have IBS, IBD, and all these named things that doctors tell you you have wrong with your colon, you might feel cramping and think, oh my goodness, I have to find a toilet in one second, it's gonna come out. That's not peristalsis. Peristalsis comes from the back of the five feet of the colon, gives you cramps forward and you have a sense that you have to have a bowel movement and that you're going to need in some in a little bit of time to have a movement but most people don't have that one of the reasons we do full-size anima bags uh, with water in them and we do colonics is to start bringing back the musculature of your colon so that your muscles will start to work again and push things forward as i showed you with these pictures what can happen is the stool has been sticky and stuck and there has not been sufficient bowel movements maybe over a, a period of time. This can also happen, by the way, if you're on drugs. So um, painkillers, sleep medicines, um, opiates, all of them relax the bowel and cause you to not have peristalsis because it's actually making you feel sedated. And that's really important. And I wanna read something here uh, for about women um, and breast cancer. And I did have breast cancer in o end of 04 into 05. And I did not choose um, radiation or chemo, and I was able to get well. But I like to quote this because in 1982, the Saturday Evening Post had an article on the subject of con constipation and cancer. And this is a long time ago, and I can only imagine that it has exponentially uh, you know, gotten worse now. But this was a physician of the University of California and he re reviewed the history of past researchers and they were discussing constipation. And one of the things that they were blown away by was that five, we found that 5% of women having one bowel movement per day would have abnormal dysplastic cells, which is precancerous cells, okay? While 10% of women having fewer than one bowel movement a day would have this abnormality and 20% of women of women having two or fewer bowel movements per week would show these dysplastic changes in cell character of the breast fluid. Now think of this, this, this could impact a woman prior to having breast cancer. This is displ dysplastic cells that are happening because she's constipated. I found it very fascinating that he said, Women that who have two or fewer bowel movements per week have four times the risk of breast cancer or breast disease, benign or malignant, as women who have one or more movements per day. <clears throat> per day. So you know, people will say to me often, "Well, everybody's different." You know, you, you you everybody goes different. Technically, that's not correct because anything you're eating, your matter is going to be in the body until it comes out of the body. And generally speaking, men have no problem going a minimum of once, usually twice a day, sometimes three times a day of normal sausage shaped six to eight inch long stools, somewhat soft, not hard rocks, not hard to push out, right? This is what is normal. 
And women just tend to not have that for lots of reasons. You know, we are made different. We have different hormones. Our hormones are greatly affected monthly by our cycles. Um, I will say right off the top here that most of the people today living in 2025, um, they figure about 90% of America has um, SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth and leaky gut syndrome. And how would you get that? Well, being on antibiotics, being taking Tylenol every day, drinking tons of caffeine. I mean, our guts break down, not to mention that since the late 80s or middle 80s, we have been having glyphosate uh, in our in our foods. So they've got poison in them and um, genetically modified the last 30 years. So there's a lot of these things that affect our guts and especially pres prescription drugs, as I said before. Um, when we have leaky gut syndrome, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're eating food and there's this microscopic holes, perforations, where your undigested food is going through into your bloodstream. Your, your lining of your intestinal tract, which should be intact, is not. And so candida albicans, which is a fungus, will grow in there. And then you will start to not fully digest your food and it's escaping into your blood. Once, once these undigested particles of food and bacteria get into the bloodstream, the, blo the body's gonna mount an attack thinking we've got, we've got invaders here. And so this body goes into this, which can lead to autoimmune disorders. You can just see how all of these things can play into having this problem. So what have I seen for over 20 years that can relieve SIBO, relieve leaky gut syndrome, relieve headaches, relieve menstrual problems, and relieve even fluey feelings and other things that people are struggling with. I would tell you, full-size enemas and doing colonics if you can afford them. Now I have another video on here explaining how to take a water enema. It takes you right through the process. You can do that. There's no money involved. Just clean water and a bag an enema bag and the information to get that is on that other video. You can go over there. So I'm telling you right now, do you suffer from bloating, gas, distension? Are you always feeling brain fog? Can you not think ever? You're just feeling like you're just, do you, have you had breast cancer in your past or, or do you possibly have something like that happening now? Again, remember the dysplasia, the dysplastic cells that are in these women when they studied them. I mean, these are women that pooping once or twice or maybe three times a week. The ones going once a day still had uh, these bad cells. So again, I mean, people are so worried about doing an enema. You know, they're like, they're so scared of it. And I'm saying to them, listen, if you go take X-lax, if you go take these, these stool softeners, all of them disrupt your biome. That's your good flora. That means your good flora, your good bacteria that gives us bowel movements. Those types of aids that the doctors give you and that the, the drugstores give you, they, they, they are actually damaging your good bacteria and they destroy them, especially stool softeners. They're not good for you. So way back, you know, thousands of years ago, and I have these books talking about, there was a bird called an ibis, and this bird uh, would, would go from continent to continent, and it would fly for days, you know, between continents. And when it would arrive on, a, on, on one of the continents, I guess people of those days started watching the bird. And what it would do with its long beak is it would dip that, that beak after his long journey, and he's exhausted, he would dip that beak into the water pull it up into his beak, put his beak right up his rear end and wash himself out over and over. He would do this as he got well and, and once he arrived at the next continent. And I can imagine people of the earliest times who had anything going on thinking, you know what, that makes sense right there. So how are animas going to damage you? Uh, we live, we have gravity. I mean, we are all subject to gravity. So, I mean, you do an enema a couple days in a row, you're like, I'm never going to poop again. Yes, you will. You will. You will poop again. It's, that, it's not going to damage you. When I had cancer, it took me two years to get well doing it naturally without doing anything else. And one of the things I did regularly was water enemas and coffee enemas. When I could afford it, I would go to have a, a colonic. And you can see my colonic machine here in the back because now I've been giving colonics to people for many years. Um, I have never seen people recover from various things as quickly as they recover when they get their, their bowels open. I, I've never seen anything like it. Back injuries, back pain, um, the flu, feeling sick, having migraine headaches. I have recently have a lady who has suffered from migraine headaches for 20 years of her life. She's never been without a headache. 
and she started doing uh, enemas, she started doing colonics with me, and she has not suffered one headache. Now you could say, well, she's not getting to root cause, you know, she's just doing that to get, it, get the stuff out of her. Well, maybe, maybe she's gluten intolerant, maybe she hasn't been tested for some of these things that uh, could keep her from her headaches, or she doesn't know. But I think she says that she might be being diagnosed with, with Lyme disease right now, and, and some of the problems with Lyme, and some of the problems with the things I had, which was fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, lupus, and MS, is that people with autoimmune disorders and these problems, we don't clear our toxins the same way that normal people do, okay? Other people, they will take a detox regime and they just immediately feel better in three days. Not me, I'd be in bed sick because my body wouldn't clear. So one of the things that I really noticed was when I was doing enemas and colonics, I was on any program at all. And sometimes just in daily life, if I was feeling run down or tired, immediately once the toxins were out of me, I was a new person. So I have been a sickly child in my life. I suffered from a lot of autoimmune problems. And at, at 66 now, not having to be on any drugs and to be able to, most of the time, occasionally I can still have a flare of something where I'm not feeling well. Um, and I'll give myself a colonic and I'll do ozone. And some of you know about my ozone therapy, but um, I can just encourage all of you right now that this is not an old wives tale. Look into colonics and change your life. Okay, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.